from your CEO's ESG kitten emergency. Oh, that doesn't oh. sound good. <laughs> Not the kitty. It's yet another Manic Monday edition of Business Pants, joined by extra special guest stars Ari, the Data Queen, and Jesse, the Money Whisperer. Stepping Woo-hoo. in. Your. Oh, okay. Sure. Why not clap for them? Yeah, okay. Kind of a muted applause. They don't really like you today. Um, stepping in for the analyst hole, Matt Muscardi, who was literally off on a cat emergency, right? That's what I hear? Yep. Blood yeah, kitty. but don't worry. The cat's going to be okay. I'm not, I'm not worried, Jesse. Oh, Nine lives. It's just a kitty. Brand and new. T- brand new kitten. Today's moldy tea bag called October 23rd, 2023. We are filtering the ESG news through a bunch of stupid games. Is this a new game or is this a new I don't know what this is. I don't know, Ari, because... All right, shut up, audience. I had to... You know, when I when the guests change, I kind of have to pivot the content. I had to create uh-huh. some quick, good content that you two could react to without any prep. All right. So that's what I came up with. And I tried it to Let's be a little bit more... Got. Trying to be a little bit more lighthearted to start the week. I, I found... This is a welcome change. Yeah, I try to find articles that not didn't necessarily make me giggle, but they just, I don't know, they just didn't... They weren't all doomsday. They're not all like tech bros or... You know what I mean. So okay. Okay. here's how... Are you ready to play this game? Yeah. yeah. You ready? All right, I'm going to play us in. I'm ready to how win. How play? Okay, here we go. Excited, he could use his <laughs> preferred <laughs> sounds. I call this the React to the ESG Business News Headline Game. What a amazingly wow. creative title that Mouthful. was. <laughs> and this is in honor of last week's story that we covered, which was Citibank wins case after sacking banker over two sandwich lunch claim. Do you guys remember the story? That, were you here for this story? You heard about this? No. no. Jesse, this is right up your alley, the story. So... There was a worker at Citibank who claimed two sandwiches, two coffees, you know, two bags of chips, whatever, on their lunch on a trip to Amsterdam, right? Uh, as it as it turns out, the claims were actually under the hundred dollar a day limit for the for the per diem, right? So technically, it was all legal. The the company Citibank asked the employer, like, what the, what's the deal here? And the employer said, the employee said. You know, I was just a little hungry that day. The sandwiches were small. They were, it's, it's for me. But it turns out that he was lying, and his <gasps> partner was on the trip, and the worker, you know, billed kiss, for both kiss. sandwiches. So they, the Citibank fired the banker, okay? Oh, wow. So this is like one of these ethical gray areas, right? I mean, do you think Citibank should have fired this worker? Yeah, because he lied. Okay, but it was I t- think there technically should have been a strike policy. Yeah, one, come two, on, three strikes. Fired the worker. It's a bit harsh. I mean, yeah, I there mean, should have been I some have kind s- of penalty, some kind I've of public also, shame. Uh, also, this is a dumb employee. So yeah, fired this. I was why dumb? He fire him because if you're gonna split meals with your significant other, you buy a foot long, you get a big <laughs> chip. That's- you don't buy two chips. It's, wasn't it Amsterdam? Do they have they subways probably, in they Amsterdam? I don't have American-sized portions. All right, I like what you're saying though. Just get, just ask the waiter. Just, just like bring right. me a double portion, right. like a really, or like a, you get yeah. a salad get different and stuff. a main thing yeah. and a dessert thing, and you split all those three things. You don't yeah. go buy san- two sandwiches, two bags of chips, two drinks. Are you kidding me? While so, I do think, while yeah. I do think he yeah. should have fessed up. Uh huh. I have also seen a lot crazier things be expensed on car corporate oh, cards sure, sure. that people were like, what do you mean I can't like this is this <gasps> these is so strippers were not for me. They were for our clients. Yeah. <laughs> it was enter. It was we, we talked business the whole time. It's a business expense. Uh, so that in honor of that headline, th- that's what this game is. It, it really I, uh, I'm. I'm just going to read the headline, maybe give you a little bit of background, and then just rate it from 1 to 10, just on your gut feelings, just how you feel about the story. Like, So we're playing the good game. <laughs> no. We're playing okay. the, the <laughs> hot, like, just give me a number game. Just like, Got it. Do you, 
are you happy about it? Are you sad about it? Are you angry? Do you Is not ten care? Ten happy or ten, no? Ten doesn't have to be happy. Ten can be angry. Ten can okay, be like okay. I, I. It triggered so me. Reactionary scale. So yeah. we can't actually win. I can't actually <laughs> beat Ari in this game. You just have to feel more, which I you think can, I feel the most. No, you can win. I'm gonna add up the scores. There's gonna be right. a winner and a loser. All right, you ready? For you ready? Me every time. Let's do it. Here we go. First story. Remember, remember these are all. Stories that I picked over the last few days, all, I mean, I, I think most of them covering public corporations, all companies that we cover in our database. So I'm not just making weird stuff up and being a dope. I mean, I mean maybe I'm being a dope, but the, I'm not making anything up. Here we go. First story. Guy who stole billions in Bitcoin lived a sad life. A Bitcoin original gangster, he's called, uh, who stole cryptocurrency from the original Silk Road a decade ago, spent lavishly, but lived what sounded like a sad and lonely life before he was caught. <laughs> wow, I don't even know where to start. Yeah, with how that. do you, I just want to know had how me you? At guy. <laughs> <laughs> I this this is from reporting at CNBC. I, mm. I and I just thought the whole thing was ridiculous. I got like halfway through the article. But I just want to know how you guys would react to this. You care? I love What's the Bitcoin and sad life, right? <laughs> yeah, had a sad life. That's why he did this. Um. Still billions, billions, billions in Bitcoin, Ari. Oh, wow. wow. I'm That's surprised that, yeah. That takes, yeah, that takes a lot. I'm going to give this story a six, you know? He, okay. even though he had a sad life, he clearly had some skills. The good thing about so. these these rankings is you don't even have to, I mean, I like the reasoning why you gave it a, a number, but you don't even have to because it doesn't really mean anything I'm in the gonna, end. I, so I just throw out a number. Yeah. Tell him, Jesse, tell him how you feel. you're the one I'm most interested on this one because... I, I, I'm, I'm curious. Are you, are you happy he was sad because he stole so much, or do you just not care because it's like so much money? You should have done something altruistic. Like, where do you land on this? So much I, fake money. I like the narrative of this because I think people typically are like, okay, billions of dollars. It's probably partying and buying yachts and doing this and that. And he may have been. However, yes, that, that was doesn't buy your happiness. Mm -hmm. yeah. So this just goes to prove. The age-old saying, money Ooh. can't buy happiness. <laughs> I love that. Oh, my God. Okay. Uh, you know what? <laughs> You're actually right, Jesse. Th a lot of the article featured this this kind of like sad nerd. He lived in, uh, he, he, I guess, Athens, Georgia, University of Georgia. And there are a lot of pictures of him taking out young women that look kind of like cheerleaders doing like yachty things. It, but, of course, it... They very He's much looked empty like empty inside. Yeah, they very much looked like young women who would never be hanging out with this guy if he didn't have money. So anyway, that's, that's the first story. Second story. And what was your number, Jesse? What was your number? It, that, that's a ten for me. Oh, a ten. <laughs> Jeez, I don't know <laughs> what's I, going do on. Have to, do I have to tell you what ten means? <laughs> on the sure. sadness scale. It's a Go 10. ahead. Give me a quick. <laughs> tell me why it's a ten. Well, it's a ten because it's reinforcing what we okay. know to be true. Fine. This is a perfect example. <laughs> Next story, Amazon drivers, Amazon drivers urine. Oh, remember this old story? You remember yes. this old story? Oh. Yes. Packaged as energy drink and sold on Amazon. So Amazon sold these mm. bottles of urine marketed as an energy drink. Part of a new documentary uh, meant to expose how easy it is to sell dangerous items, especially to children on Amazon. Who did this? <laughs> this is amazing. And disgusting. It, this is this makes me kind of want to like gag a, a little bit. A this lot is a new bit. documentary called "The Great Amazon Heist," uh, created by I Uba mean, you, Butler. Uba you Butler. Couldn't, you couldn't have chosen any anything else to. Oh no, prove I think it's brilliant. Of the documentary, <laughs> wonderful. Well, it's wonderful. kind of a it's a it's you a meta. If you were it's going, meta. I mean, luckily none of us are buying energy drinks on Amazon. But imagine we were the type of people that would do that. What if you drank pee? That's disgusting. Well, pee is not, doesn't kill you. I don't. Might I actually be it, refreshing. And I hope it's, it's spoiled, like, in transit. I, I'm giving this a four. It makes me feel weird. This is a I don't know. Yeah, I think Ari's right. Where Ar can I watch this documentary? Ari, Ari's Ari, it. Ari gets the, the, the bell there. Uh, the documentary is airing today on Channel 4 in the UK, but I imagine that oh. there'll be some way in the internet to get it. We'll figure it out. I'll figure it out for you, Ari. Thank well, you. So you can stream the P documentary. Uh, speaking of P, 
And it really was these two <laughs> P stories that made me kind of put these all these stories together today. Speaking of P, video shows Chinese beer worker urinating into tank. Chinese authorities <gasps> are investigating after a viral video appeared to show a worker from Tsingtao urinating into a tank believed to contain ingredients for its popular beer. So. Oh my God, I'm so scared for that guy. <laughs> you know Which what guy? though? Yeah. yeah what? You're Tell me. I don't know how it is in China, but uh-huh. here you're allowed like very small increments in of gross stuff like bugs and plastic and bugs stuff aren't in, gross. How dare you in food? So like it, it, maybe in if the tank was big enough, it was just <gasps> under sure the lot. I don't know. How this big is the nasty. tank? Was it a it, ten? It's a massive tank. Nasty. This is a massive nasty, company. Nasty, nasty, but like it probably would, he'd get away. Like no one would notice in America with our, uh, well, with they, our, I don't know, rules and regulations. They, they would notice if there was a video uh, t- totally. taken out of the event and then posted saying, online. Yeah. Sipping or eating. Dude, see, I think the funny thing is how different my reactions were. Amazon selling pee. Oh my God, who did this? Chinese worker pee since tank. Oh my God, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I so mean, yeah. I'm gonna give this a ten on the scariness. Double ten for the P stories. I love Dude. this. Uh, I guess P is just <laughs> great in a headline. Maybe. Well, you have a young child, so P is oh, a big everywhere. part of your world. Big part of your world. He's, he's peed in my face. Peed in his face. Right. You know? Peed in the beer tank. <laughs> Jesse, what's your score in this dad's one? Dad's open beer can. Um, <laughs> I'm just giving this a five because, like, I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> Can I? Uh, will it make you happy, Jesse, if I told you that's our last urine story for the day? Yes. Oh. All right. How about this headline? NVIDIA CEO and co founder Jensen Wang says nobody in their right mind would start a company and he would opt out if he could go back in time. So I, I just. What? Yeah, I, I, exactly. I wanted to just see, like, first of all, do you believe it? Like, NVIDIA, one of the no. biggest uh, companies in the world. He, but he sounds like. He, he's gone through like a slightly soul crushing experience. Here's his quote. Building NVIDIA turned out to have been a million times harder than I expected it to be. If we realize the pain and suffering involved and just how vulnerable you're going to feel, the challenges you're going to endure and the embarrassment and the shame, I don't think anybody would start a company. Nobody in their right mind would do it. So, Jeez. Wait, is he still at the company? Yes. Sorry, I missed that yes. Part. Again, one of the most successful companies in the world. Right. Still at the company. Also, one of the, like, lots of controversy and not great headlines. But no, no, NVIDIA does. I wouldn't say that. They're big on the AI push, but we don't see a lot of negativity coming out of NVIDIA, frankly. I, am I wrong, Ari? Do Emma you always reported on NVIDIA. Do you remember? Really? I don't remember. Yeah. I, I just want to know, like, does, there are a few things that come to my mind. A, does this does this make this guy ultra believable? And B, should we be frightened that he's basically saying only maniacs run these big <laughs> companies, right? Like, should we Help. be frightened by that? Uh, Jesse, yeah. you don't look like you care at all, Jesse. Or maybe, you know, this guy just I'm trying to see their controversy score. Thicker mm-hmm. skin. Oh, it's I not bad. Know. Comparatively, I guess. All right, give me a quick score. We can move on from this one. I'm going to give this a two. <laughs> okay. I I just think that he could have opted out at any point in time. True, like that's true. Stressing him out, he could have elected someone else. That's and true. It makes me think he's a little bit of a narcissist. Cause I like, like this. If he didn't do it. Nobody could have. Done the I like company what you're saying. It is. So, um, I'm gonna sk- I'm gonna give this one a ten on the narcissist Whoa. scale. <laughs> you guys are just like intentionally playing the opposite of each other. All right, ne- next headline. No. Chevron boss, although I'm getting, I, I, I continually go, I'm growing weary of these business news headline writers. You can say the names of these people, right? You wouldn't say Laker player. You'd say LeBron James. I mean, come on, just stop it. So his name is C- his Mike Worth, and he's the CEO. Here's the headline. Chevron boss says his company has changed the quality of life on earth for the better. He said, wow. oh he said, quote, we are not selling a product that is evil, not selling a product that is evil. He sa- also said that I mean, uh, Chevron didn't invent what did they invent something? Or did they just they sell oil? Like they have oil, right? They're not the only oil company in the world, right? He described the company something? as grounded in integrity and a deep belief in doing the right thing. You know what? <laughs> I what? 
I this feel is... strongly about this considering the movie I just watched last what? night, which What's that? was a three and a half mo- uh-uh. three and a half hour movie called The Killers of the Wildflower Moon. I thought you said three and a half about minute. About yeah. You watched three a three and, and a half, half hour movie at the theater. I didn't we didn't lo- do our research. Ahead of time. <laughs> um, and it's about the Osage Indian community, Native American okay. community that discovered oil and they were the richest people that lived and then the the whole story was about how there were white people coming in to like marry them but also trick them and murder them to get the the how right dare to their you? land mm-hmm. so i feel strongly about this because uh, oil is definitely not that was not on the land of white people or blah 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 companies like this so yeah. worth can just not just don't <laughs> you can just Please. not okay i like it just don't and like nobody's saying nobody's saying that oil is evil and always has been but we're evolving to acclimate to the status of our environment and the climate crisis so I, it requires some change so I'll, get on board i'll add this also in the news and <laughs> a story we're not covering chevron announcing uh, a 55 billion dollar deal i believe all in cash to buy uh, oil rival hess so wow. th- there's a lot of activity what? in the oil, oil buys more oil exactly so what are, are you, you so joking i'm not joking what's your score jesse um you had a lot to say i'm gonna guess it's a high score i'm just trying to figure out what my metric on what, what scale what my scale <laughs> is for this um that's why i like this game yeah this pisses me off i'm gonna give it a 10 on yes the that's the right answer i find this so cynical it is unbelievable like chevron ceo saying this shit okay thank you thank you now can you please get out of the way of mm-hmm. progress as we try to you know, not kill the earth further. So I'm going to give this a six. I love the, the, I love the randomness of that six. Right, shut up. Ooh, You're this not is being a, very a sp- nice to our audience. Speaking today. of oil, I know they're irritating me today. It's because they uh, they took the last good coffee and I have to drink instant coffee, <laughs> so I'm just mad. Uh, th- speaking of oil, thousands of people, I, I did not know about this. Thousands of people are cutting off their hair and donating it to help soak up an oil spill in Venezuela that is so large it can be seen from space. So I guess environmentalists, they weave nests out of hair, not only from people, but from their dogs. Uh, And it's a a way of stopping oil slicks from spreading. I I did not know about this. but So this is what's going on in Venezuela, as uh, Mike Worth is talking about how, you know, how good he is and how good this story is. is a 10 for creativity and rage 10 <laughs> for me for ingenuity my goodness that is i don't know how people they came coming about together that, but, but in a raging manner i hope yeah it's kind of it's kind of hopeful and depressing at the same time yes. is that possible yes. yeah yeah it is a 10 on the hopeful and depressing scale. yeah all right this next story i it, look i was just impressed by the amount of of different uh important things and and nouns and and subjects and I, it just blew my mind <laughs> so here's the headline nouns. <laughs> here's a noun. here's the headline scottish water admits solar farms could use parts linked to china's forced labor camps how about Why that for cramming scottish in water? scottish like, water is the, the main water Institute. company over there in, in okay. scotland over there in the uk i just okay. impressed with the amount of different i'm going to read it again so you can Please. hear it again Please. just the amount of different things turning here the amount of different gears spinning scottish water admits solar farms could use parts linked to china's forced labor camps i mean i i just that i was just blown valid, away by this though. Just blown away by this. It's they valid. It seems probable, actually. They admit they could have maybe used parts from labor camps. I think they're speculating. <laughs> I think this is speculation. I just love they all of it. They are speculating on themselves. And also, is water against solar now? Like I thought uh, they that, were on again, the same right? team. I was thinking that too. No, that I think that that they they are operating the solar farms. Oh, yeah. So they're so they're revealing their own secrets. No, yeah. I think they're they're angry. They 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 don't want oh. to use these parts. Yeah, 
They, they've discovered this post haste, I believe. I it, look. I, here's what I love. I love wa the water. I love that it's Scottish water. I love that there are farms, but they're solar farms. I love that there's forced labor, but not just regular forced labor. It's from China. This is just come on. This is just a geopolitical China, you know. wonderland. Yeah, it's got everything. It's, it's got <laughs> exactly it has everything. I'm gonna For give me. it an eight. <laughs> oh, I was gonna give it an eight on the confusion you both. scale. <laughs> you can both give it an eight. All right, moving on. Oh, this one's right up both of your alley. Here's the headline: A good cruise is one that does not come. Oh! And, and it's based on this little sad tidbit. This is out of Europe. Uh, this is the out of the Guardian, I believe. Uh, the 218 cruise ships operating in Europe last year emitted more than four times, four times more sulfur oxides than all of the continent's cars combined. I mean, that's just wow. nuts. Nuts, just nuts to me. Wow. Yeah, it is a wow, is yeah, it not? Yeah, we hate, we, I don't like cruises. Yeah. I mean, remember when I picked the goodliest of the cruise that was up? Uh, oh, yeah. Postponed. Three-year yeah, cruise. Shit. Yep, and you, you know, you poo-pooed all over it. I'm going to so give it. Can you read the exact headline so I can figure out my reading? A good cruise is one that does not oh, come. 10. Oh, oh 10. <laughs> mic drop 10. Yeah, the the, ra the <laughs> rationale. Amen. We should we get t-shirts that say that. We have this. <laughs> A, a, a lot of port cities have this ongoing debate, right? Like we have this all the time up here in Portland. We have these massive cruise liners that come, especially at the end of summer and fall. And the debate always is, well, you know, these people are getting off and they're spending into our economy. So it's a great thing. And uh, this article uh, covers the reality that really, for the most part, people are getting off. They're kind of walking around and then they're getting back on the ship because all their meals are paid for yeah. there. And they're not, they're not spending any money. I mean, why would That's you spend valid. money? Yeah. Anyway. Okay. So we got two, ooh, two tens. All right. Next story. This is just, it, I, I don't know. I just picked this one because first of all, this industry, these stores are always, they're always doing horrible things. And this one ooh. just caught me off Hell. guard. Dollar General took oh. back job offers from applicants with high blood pressure and poor eyesight. This is part of a lawsuit um, filed by the Equal o Employment Opportunity Commission. Uh, they said that the medical, the medical examinations were extensive and often highly invasive, including taking vital signs, a drug test, a vision test, a review of current medications, and a what? physical examination, including, in some instances, genital examination of job applicants. I just, 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 I don't understand how this industry persists. I'm, I'm amazed. Sorry. Dollar General or, like, to sign up for the United States Army. Yeah, right. I'm yeah. There is There is no job at the Dollar General that could require this amount. Of <laughs> I, just don't, I just don't get how this... I don't I just don't get like why regulators just don't come in and padlock the whole thing. It's just that it's Dude, I, I've never heard of ew, more abuses that opens toward its stakeholders, that. toward its customers and employees more than this industry. It's just constant this abuse. This is terrible. Constant I hate abuse. everything about this. Uh, so, this so, is, is that, so is that a zero or a ten? I can't wait to follow this <sighs> lawsuit. This is definitely illegal, right? It's got to be, right? Yes. I'm going to give this a zero. Yeah, oh. I'm giving this a zero. See, now, I, again, I love that I can't follow the logic of this stupid game <laughs> because that could have just as easily been a 10 for outrage. How, okay, this is a very simple headline. It doesn't, it doesn't really affect a public corporation, but it's something we do talk about the anti-ESG, anti-woke words all the time here, but a very simple headline out of Florida. Don't say gay Florida lawmaker sentenced to federal prison. Oh, let's go, let's go. <gasps> This guy, uh, the le the former ass. legislator who like wrote an this, uninformed ass, who wrote this bill, he he stole money through a through the uh, he stole COVID nineteen relief money. He stole what? over one hundred and fifty thousand dollars by making up a bunch of nonsense. So he got sent to prison for like, wire he fraud, stole narcissism, like pocketed scale. it. Like yeah, he he, he made up a bunch of nonsense on these forms t to get the relief fund. Yeah. And he got busted. Oh my God. He didn't see all of the disclaimers when you applied for any of the loans that are like, you have to prove X amount of like X amount of this loan goes to your operating expenses or 
no, no, he, it, he, it was worse than that, Jesse. It, it wasn't like a, you're making it sound like he made a mistake on the forums. He, he create, he, he committed absolute fraud. I mean, he, wow. he okay. basically Don't ma- made say up gay, stuff. But yes, do fraud. Yes. Yeah. Right. Oh. Where, where does he, what is his moral compass? <laughs> well, I, I, it's I guess it's totally broken. and utterly confusing. Yeah. But um, how about the, how about the karma of the jail. world? How about the karma of the world, though? Yeah, I mean, dude, sending awesome. the guy who wrote universe, "Don't Say Gay." Yeah, he had gone to jail for the "Don't Say Gay" thing. I, regardless, I would yeah. give this a ten. Yeah, regardless. Yeah, this is yeah. a ten on my narcissism scale, and I don't know, just justice, <sighs> justice and, was served. And finally, in our big headlines quiz for October twenty third, uh, twenty twenty three, I'll stay tuned because we have a uh, we have a quick little pop quiz at the end, just to Ooh. just to make Ari and Jesse a little uncomfortable. Yeah, our last headline: actors. Uh, you know, there's a there's a big strike going on in Hollywood. The actors are still on strike. The, they've been on strike for over a hundred days. The writers settled their strike. Mm-hmm. The union, but, but I don't know when. A couple of weeks ago, a month ago. But here's the headline: actors have been warned that w- by their own union that wearing uh, 2023's popular Halloween costumes would violate the strike. So they're they are telling their union members not to wear costumes from things like the Barbie movie or Marvel movies because they okay. say it would violate the strike. What do you think about this one? Um, I think we have bigger problems. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like what? I, 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 this just does an- seem like peanuts to really focus on. Okay. Like just let them have fun on is Halloween. Is it for, is Come it on. as a heads up? Like, hey, by the way, we don't want you to get in trouble. Well, just the problem so is know, that that wearing a Barbie or Ken mask, it, it kind of wades into the territory of publicity or promotional activity. And, it, you know, it's again, it's against yeah. the union, you know, it's against the striking rules. Yeah, I'll give this a <laughs> six for bringing attention to it. I, I, I see. <laughs> it could have been I, overlooked. I, I can't argue with your score, Ari, but I just think it's amazing that we're covering a story where people are being told what to wear for Halloween. I just think it's incredible. <laughs> yeah. Jesse, what do you think? <laughs> she doesn't care about this one. I don't care. Clearly <laughs> obvious. <laughs> I gotta give it a five. I don't okay. care. Five I did is the read this independently, and I was like, I don't get it. What is the big deal? For the but game maker at this company, five is always the the stab in the heart <laughs> because it means you just don't care about my stupid game anymore. All right, thank you. That was the I don't know what that was. The rate, the headline. How do you feel? Headline game. Blah blah blah. Give me a number. The winner is. How do I decide the winner of this game? <laughs> I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pick who had the most tens, and that would be Ari. Ari. Six, by six oh. to five, you had the most tens. Ari, you're the winner. <laughs> Should I just chose ten for this last one? <laughs> uh, okay, finally, I want to play a quick corporate jargon pop quiz game. All right. And I'm gonna let you guys. I'm gonna be nice. I have me. eight eight jar, eight corporate buzzwords, phrases, blah blah blah. I'm gonna let you guys play together on this. So oh, that okay. so no, so you guys don't feel stupid. Uh, you don't struggle for the answers. I don't have multiple choice. I'm just gonna throw out the term, and these are a very specific. These are very specific terms because these are the ones that Gen Z hates the most. Oh. Okay. Okay. Eight examples of corporate jargon and phrases that weird out Gen Z. They hate these phrases. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, and, and I'm actually amazed because a lot of these I haven't even heard of. The first oh. one. Blue sky thinking. What does blue sky thinking mean? Any idea? I do. I have heard this. Have you heard this? I have Maybe heard out this. of the box thinking. Damn. No. I don't know. <laughs> uh, wow. Jesse, so I'll give you a. I'll give you a correct answer. And Ari, for that sad, I don't know. I'm gonna give you a. <laughs> Uh, I should get a minus one because I'm like, wait a minute, I have heard this, but I don't know. No, we're we're. It encourages. It's to describe a form of creative brainstorming, encouraging people to think uh, without being inhibited by existing beliefs or ideas. Okay, Okay. they hate that one. I was right. Moving on, boiling the ocean. What does boiling the ocean mean? (laughs) All right, I'm gonna end. Put salt on their food. Well, okay, you obviously so don't know. Water, so the the salt of water boils differently, <laughs> and then you're left with salt. You can't boil the salt. Well, out. it's a, it's the start of a delicious pasta dish, though. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We don't know okay. this one. Hold on. I know, but oh, we have to Ari's guess something. Okay. Okay. Uh, in what serious. context? <laughs> can can <laughs> you use it in a sentence? The 
<laughs> Gen Z at work. Uh, uh, you can't boil the ocean. Uh, yeah, don't. You can't so let's, do it the, all. Uh, yes, uh, that's basically. Oh. I'm gonna kind of give you the right answer there. It's basically business speak for taking on an impossible or unnecessarily difficult task, right? Because you can't nice. boil the ocean, right? All right, moving on. What is a quick flag? I'm, another one I've never heard of. A quick flag. Like bring your attention to. Yeah. Quick All right. Flag. I'm gonna give you the right answer on that one. Like a post-it flag. Yeah. Uh, a quick flag. flag. They want to raise something uh, important that's potentially an issue. A quick flag. Okay. Yeah. Ducks in a row. I feel like we know this one. Uh, Ducks in a row. This. To get your stuff together. Herding cats. Impossible task. Uh yeah. Low hanging fruit. Uh, this is one of my least favorite ones. Low hanging fruit. The easy task. E yeah, the easy task. No, it's not easy. It's more. It's more nuanced. The grabbable. That. The ones that you can knock off quickly. Yeah, you're all right. You're all right. E the tasks that are easiest to accomplish. I didn't even know that's what it meant. I just hate. I always hate that. I always just look I the other way. I thought it had a bad connotation. It's like. I think it means like, like you have all these problems already. Like we have like 800 things. So let's just at least get through some of the easy ones. Let's just Fine. go to the low hanging fruit. Right. I, I, have you ever been apple picking? Now that you have a, a, a nice, beautiful child, Ari, you can go apple picking with a child. And you'll, you'll notice that when you have a baby in the crook of your arm, it's often easier to get the low hanging fruit <laughs> than to get on the ladder, right? And get those juicy pink ladies up on a, you know what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah. Okay. Uh, two more terms. What about singing from the same hymn sheet? <laughs> this You're is weirdly biblical. Page. Yeah, what is that? Uh, I was, what did you say? On the same page. On the same page, okay. I, I'm going to say... <gasps> refers to people having the same understanding of something or saying the same thing often publicly. Is that is that what you... Well, okay. No. Nobody kind cares of, about that but one. It's okay. You and can finally... Move the needle. Oh, to make progress. Effect change. Oh, sure, whatever. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> Neither does Gen Z. <laughs> I apologize for the corporate jargon was? game. That was Business Pants for October 23rd, 2023. I want to thank the great uh, Data Queen and Money Whisperer for joining me on a late notice. I want to remind the audience that our show today was sponsored by Free Flow Analytics, the only ESG data platform platform to measure real board influence. That's Free Flow Analytics. Join us Wednesday. Matt's going to go over uh, the directors at Exxon, the engine number one. Yeah put into place gonna have a go to a deep dive there we'll cover a bunch of other stuff that's it that's all i got you got anything any final famous last words from our two game show contestants go look up dollar general on our platform yeah i like it uh thank you both and get back to work <laughs>